Hello everyone, thank you for joining me. I am Letitia, the pastry chef with Calam Resorts, and today we are going to be making keto cheese focaccia. Focaccia is a very easy bread to make. Um, and for the keto fans or the keto lovers, people on this lifestyle, because it's not just a diet, but a lifestyle. And there are a lot of people that are on the side and take it very seriously. So I'm going to show you how to make a very easy, um, tasty focaccia. So what I'm going to start with first is that I have some lukewarm water. And um, you want to make sure your water is not too hot when you're using yeast because the hot water will kill the yeast you won't get the rise you're looking for and um, you, you just need your water to be lukewarm okay hot will destroy it I've got a little bit of honey honey I know this is a keto diet this is very little honey it's simply to activate the yeast now so not only does the warm water help with activating but the sweetening the sugar in the honey will also uh, activate it you guys had any of um, Rave's, uh, the bakery's uh, cinnamon rolls and sticky buns, I always put my sugar in my, my yeast. It just helps. So I've got that little honey in that water and then I'll sprinkle in the yeast. And you're going to just mix it a little bit and let, let the yeast react on its own. It'll start to foam up. Um, one day I forgot that I had the yeast in uh, water sitting on my table and when I came back it just did its own thing and it was everywhere. So I got my yeast, my water, and honey. Okay? And in my next bowl I am going to do two egg whites. That's this, so I just pre-cracked it. So it's two egg whites here and one whole egg. And what else will we put in this? The whole egg. Oh, in here I have the oil and vinegar. Uh, it calls for just a few teaspoons, I believe two teaspoons of apple cider vinegar, and then I have the olive oil. Okay, that's going in there, and I'm going to wh whisk that up. Okay. Give it a nice whisk until it's nice and frothy. You'll see bubbles on top. Oh, you'll see some bubbles. You'll really get the reaction once we put that into here. So, I'm going to mix that up a little bit. And we'll just pretend that our yeast has risen. I really wish I could. You can start to so, sort of see it's starting to bubble a little bit. I don't really know how much you can see with this, this camera here. But it's starting to bubble a little bit. Now, whatever the yeast touch, it's going to stick to. That's just how it it does. Um, it, that's how the yeast works. It will just stick to it and hover to it and not let go. So, I'm going to scrape that down into here. So, in this bowl, again, is your yeast, water, and honey. And you're adding that into your egg, oil, and vinegar mixture. Okay? I'm going to save that spatula because I'm going to use it again. Give it a good whisk. You'll start to see some bubbles on top, and that's what you're going to be looking for. Okay, and I've got bubbles on top here. The camera angle. Okay. Be careful there. So in here I have my almond flour. I forgot to display it here. I have some of the bleached almond flour. I did order this online from uh, Amazon. Um, a little of this goes a long way. So this recipe, I you saw how the amount that I used, um, a little of this will last a long time. We're not making a whole lot of keto things. And then also I have the whole psyllium husk. That's what's here. That's going to go into your um, mixture here. So we're going to basically, this is your dry ingredient, so if you're using your AP flour, your all-purpose flour, 
uh, your dry ingredients are going in here. This psyllium husk is, uh, is a soluble fiber, so this is an excellent source of fiber. We found this bag at Sprout. So to make this bread, and a lot of the keto breads call for psyllium husk or ground flax seed. So we've got those two. Also, it calls for uh, xanthan gum. Now, you can find xanthan gum. Usually, it's in a bag. Uh, you can find it, of course, online. But the xanthan gum helps to give it the bread that chew. So if you've made anything with just almond flour, you I can still tell that it's almonds. It, it is finely grind, but this uh, xanthan gum helps it to give it more of that bready chew. Okay, So if you see a recipe that calls for xanthan gum on a keto recipe, please don't try to omit it because you need it. Okay, so then we have that here. We've got our baking powder to help with the rise. We do already have the yeast with the baking powder as well. And good old salt. Okay. Now you would typically whisk this together and mix it together. I'm just going to toss it with my hands. So almond flour, the psyllium husk. You won't be disappointed. I tried this last week and I was really surprised at the, the flavor and the texture that you've got uh, if you like focaccia bread and eating with, with just something simple as oil and balsamic vinegar or vinegar. Um, it was really good. Okay, so I believe I did this opposite. I was supposed to add my liquid into the bigger bowl that way I can switch it over but we'll work it out. I'm going to show you how I'm going to work it out too. I'm going to just take half of this because you're going to add your dry ingredients in two parts. So I'm going to take half of this out. No worries. A lot of people they'll get recipes and they'll get so frustrated because they did something wrong or they missed a step. And uh, My saying in the kitchen is, oh, you know, I to think about it. So I always say I don't let the food control me. Like you control the food. That's how you you you're precise with things as you control the food. Well, now that I think about it, food does control me because I can't stop eating it. But that's another story. So I'm going to add my uh, wet ingredients into here. Okay. Again, the dry ingredients in two parts. So I'm going to start off with the whisk, but I'm going to finish with this uh, spatula over here. Okay. Mix it up. I'm going to scrape by my stickler for scraping the pans and scraping the bowls. It's, once you find out how the cost works for food um, and, and waste, you, I, I'm just mindful about it. So I just scrape it all out as much as I can, even at home. Okay. So I've got my mixture here. This is going to look more like a, a muffin batter versus a bread dough. Okay. And then I'll add the rest of my flour in there. It is going to be a little dry. It's, well, it's, it's, it's going to be like a, um, again, a, a batter. More of a batter than a bread dough, okay? You see that there? Now, at this point, if you want to add cheese into your actual bread, you can do that here. Uh, we, we're just going to put it on top here. So, um, the reason I chose this bread is because... This week is going to be National Cheese Day, and I thought about how can we incorporate cheese into something, and for our keto lovers out there, um, I figured the cheese focaccia would be something nice and different, definitely different. Okay, now you're not going to get a whole rise out of this uh, like you would a normal yeast bread, so please don't fret when your bread isn't you know, all puffy, that's, that's not this kind of game here. And, and a lot of times if you're on the keto diet, you don't want um, a whole lot of bread anyways because the, the, it is carbs, even though it's a keto bread. Okay, so that is my dough. You see that there? It's nice and clean. Now, okay, so I've got a pan here and parchment paper. This is just parchment paper, not wax paper. I'm sure you can use wax paper, but do be careful with, with baking with wax paper. It does have a little smoky smoke point. So I'm just lining, um, this is a quarter, yeah, quarter sheet pan. I'm just lining with the parchment paper and it does not have to be perfect. 
So I'm going to just line that in here and then I'm going to take some olive oil. We're going to drizzle a little there and then just smear it around. Just so that when the bread starts to spread, it's, it's, it's oiled, it's not sticking anywhere. So we're going to take the dough. Now, mind you, I've got oil on my hands. I'm going to pop them out as such. And it comes out in one nice piece there. Okay. And you're going to press it down. Now I have nails uh, on my hands, so I'm going to mainly use my knuckles and then pat it out. And plus, Focaccia already has those, the bread usually has those indentures. So this is what the dough is looking like here. And I'm going to form it. I'm going to control it and form it into the shape that I want. Now, if you want rounds and to cut into triangles pieces, you can do a round focaccia. Um, this one I'm going to do more of a rectangular shape. Okay. And again, I'm going to control how I want to shape this because this is a, a dough that can be shaped. Okay. And then you're going to have it about a, a half an inch thick. Okay. Again, this is going to rise a little bit because it's got the baking powder in there. It's got yeast in there. Uh, it's it's going to rise a little bit. Okay. So, again, I am controlling it. My thickness, I'm controlling the shape. And again, if you like a round, you can do a round. If you like uh, a square, do a square. If you want to get fancy and bust a hexagon, then hey, do you. So I'm going to just make, I was saying I was making a rectangle, but it's like looking like a little bit of a square to me. Okay. So, once we get it to this point, I'm going to take my knuckles, you can use your fingertips if you don't have nails, and, and, and just give it a little push down. Give it those indentures, indentions, that's indentures. <laughs> give it a few indents here, okay. Alrighty. Okay. And now you can top this with whatever kind of cheese that you like. I'm using a... Uh, Shredded Parmesan cheese. I love the nutty, earthy flavor from the Parmesan cheese. If you like a milder cheese, you can use a milder cheese. If you like my oh Manchego cheese, more even more of a nutty flavor, you can do that. So I'm going to take the olive oil and just give it a quick drizzle. Okay. So both under and a little on top. Um, where's my salt set? I want to sprinkle a little salt. Now there is salt in the actual bread dough, but a little bit more salt on top, okay? Just a little sprinkle, because you got all the oils in there. You're going to add some rosemary. I've got some, like I said, shredded Parmesan cheese, okay? Put that on top here. As little, as much as you like. If you like that thing cheesy, then cheese the heck out of it. And if you don't want to use the fresh rosemary, that's fine. Or if there's a different kind of herb that you like, then use that. But let me just tell you, when this thing is baking in the oven, it, you're you're at, you're wondering what is that? Oh, it just smells so good. That rosemary with the uh, nutty smell of the almonds and the parm. I'm gonna just add a little bit more rosemary. And this is just rosemary we picked up at the local store. If you've got a little garden out back and you want to use your fresh herbs in the garden, more power to you. I don't have a fresh garden, but I do have fries. And fries, aka Kroger, where I lived in Tennessee, it was called Kroger, but it's the same thing. They've been pretty faithful to me. Just as I've been faithful as to them as giving them my paycheck every, every two weeks. Okay, so here you have your keto focaccia you're going to go into the oven. The pan is, the, the paper is nice and oiled. Your dough is pushed down. It's got a little drizzle of oil, some salt on there, the Parmesan, the fresh rosemary. Again, if you don't fr want fresh rosemary, you want a different herb, you can use that. So I got that here. It's going to go into the oven, 350. 
Actually, no, it's not going to go into the oven first. You got to let it proof first. Then it's going to go into the oven. Now, I know the recipe does say to cover it. I did not cover it when I baked it. Uh, I'm going to add a little more oil to this because it got a little dry. But here is your finished product of your Tito Focaccia bread. Let's take this out of the pan. And you can cut it how you ever you like. I'm going to just do, um, since it's already, since it's already, this one is a rectangle. I'm going to just do that little crunch. It's crunch from the rosemary. And if you have some fresh olive oil or some fresh uh, balsamic vinegar, it's going to go just lovely. Here you have your keto focaccia bread. Mm. If I was on a keto diet and was feeding for bread, this is it. It's delicious. You can actually make a sandwich out of that. Or just eat it like this. Sorry. Still chewing. So, keto focaccia. Do try it. Let me know. This is what it should look like before it goes into the oven. Do try it. If you're on the keto diet, you'll love it. If you know someone who's on a keto diet, make it for them. That's half the battle with, with the diet and the reason why I'm not on the diet. Is because I, don't have, I mean, I gotta make everybody else's food, let alone trying to make my own. So, give it a try. Thank you guys for joining me, and we'll see you next time.